You see, I think there was a kind of contrast which was, uh, which has been present in the development literature for a very long time. There's one side which is saying, well, development is mainly getting the investment climate right and so forth. And, and the other is the development is mainly uh, concerned with making human beings uh, both more equipped, more free, uh, more really free, uh, not just freedom as permission, but freedom as a real ability to do things that they have reason to value, both individually as well as, as social uh, beings in terms of their contribution to the society. And that includes also participation, public discussion, public reasoning, sharing values, sharing concerns, sharing doubts, and sharing results and determination. Now, I think in this approach, uh, it's uh, interesting that the question of Kerala has, it came up. It was an interesting thing, with Kerala, for to some extent, reasons of history, originally being not a part of the British Empire, being a native empire, native kingdom, the Travancore and Cochin. Um, these were, they could carry some of the different policies than British India, and they went for education very early. But even though, uh, even with that, even though the, the average for Indian education was about, I think, 13% literacy when the British left, uh, but the Kerala's figure was, well, in the 40s, higher, but not dramatically higher. But then with independence came very big burst in education first, but then on the basis of a nearly universally educated literate population, there was strong pressure for better public health care, and then the health care also became one of the show pieces of Kerala. At that time, when I was defending it, and, and there were so many of the people involved, and some of them actually in uh, wider, um, uh, defending it, the critique used to be that, well, can a poor country, poor state in this case, afford it? And the argument was that, yes, it could, because even though education and health care uh, uh, may look expensive, but they're primarily labor-intensive work, and therefore in a poorer country, labor is also cheaper, so that e even though you, you may need more action, it costs much less in a poorer country than, than, in, a, than in a richer country. And through this process, economic growth itself would be stimulated. Now, the reason why it's worth seeing today is decades have gone by, and Kerala, instead of being one of the poorest countries, poorest states in India, has become one of the richest states. This is, of course, exactly what was anticipated by those who were pushing for that line. It's not that you continue to deny economic growth, but understand that economic growth also depends on the quality of human beings that are being, uh, being uh, cultivated through uh, deliberate public policy and social commitment. So now, actually, sometimes people who look at it say, well, Kerala can afford these things because it is a richer state. But that wasn't where the dialogue was earlier, when the dialogue was about, the, uh, about Kerala not being able to afford it because it's a poor country. But it's, I'm delighted that we've come to a stage now when Kerala, can, being one of the richer states, can more easily afford it. And this has happened to some extent in Tamil Nadu, in Himachal Pradesh, and to varying extent in different parts of India. And similarly, if you look at many other countries, Sri Lanka has been an old example, Costa Rica, many other countries across the world, Brazil, in a very big way, it, uh, in the, under the uh, uh, period of the presidency of Cardozo and later under Lula, converted what was uh, a kind of unnamed growth into a participatory growth. And the Brazilian economy with universal health care close to universal literacy, has turned the page in a way the rest of the world, many parts of the rest of the world, have not. I think one of the really exciting engagements is how intellectual discussions could make a real difference to the practical world in which we live. And the contrast between practicality and theory, uh, that's one of the, I think, terrible contrasts. Uh, is I think I, I never lose my enthusiasm for arguing against that, because ultimately there's nothing as important as what we think in determining 
what we do, what we act, and what kind of lives we end up le leading. Thank you.